the panel, the discussion, an objective and impartial view of the issues of interest to you. Nation Beat is on now. Good day, viewers. On September 9th, 2009, a fire which started in the surgical ward of the St. Jude's Hospital ravaged a number of sections of that hospital. When the dust settled, the South was left without a functioning hospital. Three families lost loved ones in that fire. A few days later, the operations of the hospital were relocated to the George Odlum National Stadium and have remained there as we speak. In 2010, former Prime Minister Honorable Stevenson King announced that the government would repair the damaged surgical wards and other parts that were damaged during that fire. There was a change of government in November 2011, and the new Prime Minister, the Honorable Dr. Kenny V. Anthony, decided to embark on a more comprehensive rehabilitation of the St. Jude's Hospital on the original OJ site. There were some challenges along the way, but in 2014, the government secured a loan from the Taiwanese government for US $20 million. The general elections of June 2016 saw the election of a new government. The progress of that hospital was deemed to have placed the facility at that point at approximately 80% completion. Work on the original buildings was immediately halted and in 2019, the government announced that it had decided not to pursue the completion of the original buildings and opted to construct a new building to house the hospital. By the time the general elections of 2021 were called, the progress on that new building was woefully nowhere near being ready to accommodate the transition from the George Odlum National Stadium back to the OJ site. In an attempt to bring a final resolution to the issue of a proper functioning hospital to the south of the island, the Cabinet of Ministers in August 2021 approved the appointment of a committee to review options for the completion of the completion and commissioning of the St. Jude's Hospital and to advise the Cabinet on the feasibility and requirements for an immediate move and transfer of operations from the George Odlum National Stadium to the original OJ site. The review committee recommended to the government that the completion of the ground floor of the new building should not be pursued. They also recommended that the completion of phase one of the original St. Jude's buildings be pursued and that the physiotherapy and dialysis buildings also be incorporated into the St. Jude's Hospital complex. The final recommendations from the review committee was to reconstitute the project steering committee to ensure that the principal stakeholders are also afforded an opportunity to contribute to the decision-making process moving forward. On November 1st, 2022, the government recommenced recommenced construction activities at the St. Jude's Hospital reconstruction site. The first component of those works included clearing of the buildings and the installation of a perimeter chain link fence. The project has now moved into a very critical phase where construction activity is moving full steam ahead. Over the next hour, we shall be discussing the St. Jude's Hospital Rehabilitation Project. I am your host, Silas Wilson, the Liaison Officer for the St. Jude's Hospital Reconstruction Project, employed with the Ministry of Economic Development. My guests today are the Chairperson for the St. Jude's Hospital Reconstruction Project Steering Committee, Mr. Michael Willius, and Mr. Jeffrey McKee, an architect by profession and one of many technical persons employed with the firm Caribbean Consulting Engineers Limited. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome, gentlemen. Thank you. Thank, Thank, you. You. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Wilson. Let me first start with Mr. Willius. 
In August 2021, the Cabinet of Ministers appointed a review committee to examine the options available to the government and to present a recommendation to the government on how to proceed on completing and operationalizing the hospital. Kindly explain to our listeners, how did we get to where we are today? What factors were taken into account in determining a move to the original buildings and not the new building which was started back in 2019? I'm happy to be here today to provide some insights into the reconstruction of St. Jude Hospital. Um, to answer your question, as you, as you rightly stated, the Cabinet of Ministers appointed a review committee to look into the project and to advise on, on, on the way forward. And the review committee came back with the recommendation to continue work on phase one, what we call phase one, which is the, 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 the project which was started in 2010 under Honorable Stevenson King, continued by Dr. Anthony, um, and now the recommendation was to go back to these structures and, and, to, and to complete them. Um, first of all, the, the committee examined phase one and phase two, which is the, what, what is, is the new structure that was put up. And in, in doing the examination, they discovered that there was absolutely nothing wrong with the structures. They are sound, they, 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 are, they were well built, and there was considerable improvement in the structures in terms of the work that had been done up to August 2016. Um, they also discovered that in terms of costing, it was in a, a much more state of readiness for completion. So it would have cost the government a lot less to go into that structure. And, and therefore, based on that, they felt that it would be money well spent to continue um, the reconstruction project, which was started as phase one, and to complete it. So there was nothing wrong with the buildings. They are sound. Um, they were in a much more advanced stage of preparedness. And financially, it would serve the people of St. Lucia and the taxpayers' money better because you would have had to spend less money to get it into a state where you could bring back the, op the operations of the hospital to St. Jude's on the side at OJ. So if, if I'm hearing you correctly, the Prime Minister did not wake up um, one morning and decided that uh, the government was going to um, attempt to complete the original structures which were started back in 2010. There was a lot of professional expertise that went into the review committee. Absolutely, absolutely. As, as you pointed out, the cap cabinet appointed a team of professionals. Um, on that team, we had two architects. We had um, someone involved in construction management. We had quantity surveyor. We had procurement expert. Um, there were quite a wide range of expertise in terms of the sort of expertise you require to make a good assessment of the buildings, of the project, and, and what was required. So it wasn't a situation where the Cabinet of Ministers decided on their own. A review committee comprising of professionals, including structural engineer, and as I said, a number of other disciplines were the ones who made an examination of the two structures. They looked at the, the entirety of, of what was going on, and the recommendation was made to cabinet that it would be a very um, prudent decision to move ahead with the continuation of phase one. Okay. Um, one of the recommendations from the um, review committee was also the reconstitution of the project steering committee. Um, you are currently the chair of that committee. Um, tell us what are the parameters, the responsibilities of the Project Steering Committee? Well, well, the Project Steering Committee was again appointed by the Cabinet of Ministers to ensure that the project gets the proper guidance going forward. It's not a situation where a Minister of Health or a Minister of Economic Development would decide what has to be done. Uh, a steering committee is a national committee that advises and guides as to how the project is going to be implemented. 
So, so at the end of the day, the, the people of St. Lucia would get the benefit of the best facility. So it comprises of representatives from the Ministry of Health, the Office of the Prime Minister, um, St. Jude Hospital the technical team, St. Jude Hospital management, and other professionals who are involved in the, in the health sector, but are not necessarily working for the government. So it brings together um, expertise from the hospital, from the Ministry of Health, from um, persons in the health sector, and Office of the Prime Minister, as well as um, representative of the Ministry of Economic Development, who, who is the agency, the government agency responsible for executing and implementing the project. So when you have that combination of, of, of expertise guiding the project and ensuring that the finances are in place, ensuring that the transition plan to move from the stadium is in place, to ensure that the works are going on um, properly, this is what you need to guide a project. A project cannot be guided by one person or two persons simply making decisions. So far, what has the um, project steering committee been able to, 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 to consider as far as moving the project forward? Well, well we, we work closely with the Ministry of, of, of Economic Development, the executing agency. Um, we ensure that um, the right processes are followed. For instance, we have been able to get, we have been able to get the a consultant engineer supervisor appointed on the project as consultant to, to, to the government. We ensure that that process is in place because when you have a project of that magnitude, um, even though you have the the project committee, the, the project units in the Ministry of Economic Development um, managing the project. Government needs to have um, consultants, supervising engineering firm on the ground as its eyes and its ears to ensure that um, whatever is being done is being done correctly according to plan because you would, you, would, you would engage contractors, but you need expertise that could supervise the contractors mm -hmm. for you. So we, we have, bring, we brought in the, the engineering firm to supervise the work and to advise government. We have been able to ensure that the, the transition plan is being developed by the St. Jude Hospital so that at the right time, when the, the, the works are completed, there will be a, a smooth transition from the, from, the, from the stadium into the new facility. We ensure that um, the stakeholders, the, the, in fact, the, the, the users of, of the facility, um, St. Jude Hospital, we ensure that they are fully engaged in visiting the facility, ensuring that um, it is being done um, in a manner that suits, uh, suits them, mm -hmm. that they are engaged all along the way in consultation, that if there are slight changes to be made, they, that they, they participate in the process, and that a facility is not built for them and handed over to them. But they were fully engaged in all the steps in terms of the actual construction, and advise, advise it on changes and what is necessary for them because at the end of the day, they are the end users. So our job is to ensure the financing is in place, the supervision is in place, the transition is in place, the, um, the actual facility is being built in a way that it, it satisfies the, 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 um, the needs of the end users. Um, the nurses, the hospitals, the technicians, the management of St. Jude Hospital. So we bring all these units together on an on a, on a ongoing basis and to also make sure that the project moves along um, in a time frame that we can deliver it to the people of St. Lucia within a reasonable time. Okay, you did make mention of the engagement of a consulting engineering firm yes. to provide supervision for the project. Um, we have with us today uh, Mr. McKee from Caribbean Consulting Engineers. 
Um, back in May of this year, the government officially engaged Caribbean Consulting Engineers um, as the supervision agency on the St. Jude's project. Mr. McKee, tell us a little bit about CCE. Good. Thank you, Mr. Mr. Wilson, and thank you to the viewers. Um, CCE is, is an acronym for um, Caribbean Consulting Engineers, St. Lucia Limited. Mm -hmm. um, it's a well-established company here in St. Lucia. I've been around for a couple of years. Um, we have a very good, solid track record, successfully um, delivering various project, projects um, over the years. Um, we have served many governments, um, industrial and commercial clients, locally and um, regionally as well. Uh, we, some of the projects that we have worked on includes um, the rehabilitation of the um, Denry Polyclinic, uh, as along with um, other similar um, projects within the um, um, uh, the health um, um, industry um, that um, helps serve the people of St. Lucia and also some in the region as well. Mm -hmm. All right, but before we go for our commercial <coughs> break, tell us quickly, what is the, the scope of the assignment that, that, that your company has um, as it relates to the St. Jude's Hospital project? Well, as it relates to the St. Jude's Hospital project, uh, some of the main objectives of our assignment is to provide a complete set of four construction drawings along with set of general, special, um, technical specifications, include bill of quantities, um, condition of contracts, to be included in the submitting of documents um, for the procurement of works. Um, in brief, the assignment consists of scoping and carrying out supplemental services necessary, um, field investigations and review and revision of architectural, structural, and um, mechanical engineering um, electrical joints, um, all of which is required for the completion, bring the institution to a full completion and, and, and full use. Um, all designs are to conform to international health standards, uh, appropriate building codes, uh, construction standards and practices to ensure adequate purpose and, and mitigate against natural um, disasters. Okay, all right. Um, of course, we now break for a, a commercial, but when we come back, I want to ask you, Mr. McKee, um, part of your assignment has to do with um, design review. Uh, and we know that you have done a significant amount of that in the last few months. We will discuss what it is that you have uncovered so far in your design review, where are we at this point in time, um, and we'll segue, of course, into a critical aspect of the project, which is um, ensuring that we comply with the laws of St. Lucia in that we um, make a submission to the Development Control Authority mm -hmm. and we get the requisite permission that is required for us to move with the project. So uh, we now take a commercial break. We'll be back in a couple of minutes with you. Tourism brings wealth to the nation. Do your part with green innovation. Opportunities for all the competition. St. Lucia number one in the region. Embrace the culture, don't deplete. Community starts with we. Let's keep the natural beauty of streets at BC. Hey, show the world what we create. Tourism with there, we celebrate. Sustainable and green, we call it. Yeah. Educate yourself and participate. Participate in the week of activities for Tourism Week, September 24th to the 30th. The Ministry of Agriculture, Fisheries, Food Security and Rural Development is placing heavy emphasis on the concept of food security. It's our prosperity, our future. The Cocoa Sector Enhancement Project, CSEP, is targeting the rehabilitation of at least 201 acres of cocoa and the expansion of at least 294 acres. It protects against main diseases like black pod and witch's broom and pests like rodents. It secures the appropriate enabling environment to advance the sector. To learn more about the Cocoa Sector Enhancement Project, please contact Project Coordinator at 459-7003. Welcome back, viewers. Today we are here having a discussion on the St. Jude's Hospital Rehabilitation Project. My guests are Mr. Michael Williams, the chairperson for the Project Steering Committee, 
and Mr. Jeffrey McKee, an architect with Caribbean Consulting Engineers, the supervising firm attached to the St. Jude's Hospital Rehabilitation Project. Um, before the break, I did mention to you that we would explore um, part of your scope, design review. Um, a lot has happened in terms of reviewing the designs uh, for St. Jude's. Um, in order to ensure that we comply with the law, a submission has to be made to the Developmental Control Authority. Um, and, and, and in so doing, we need to ensure that we have um, met all of the expectations of the, 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 the DCA to ensure that the requisite permission is obtained, that the facility can be safe for the users um, as well as the, the customers, the, the hospital clients. Mm -hmm. Tell us so far what it is that you have uncovered in your design review. How has that gone? Where are we at this point um, in terms of our application? that is supposed to go forward to the DCA very soon. Okay. Uh, during the design review, we analyzed the original design to detail, in detail, to ensure that everything meets the project requirements, uh, regulations, and any specific client needs. Uh, the purpose is to identify any areas uh, that may require modification, improvement, adjustments to ensure successful implementation of the project. Uh, I, mean, I believe with effective communication and collaboration among the project team, um, us architects, clients, um, other stakeholders, um, will contribute to the successful of the design review phase um, by addressing any significant changes required from the original design promptly so we can ensure project aligns with the objectives and stakeholders' expectations. Uh, as it relates to, to, to DCA, this project is uh, going through um, the phase that any other project um, is required for, uh, you know, during construction, um, as in uh, submission to the various um, referral agencies um, preview, prior to, to submission to DCA. Uh, when, we refer, when we refer to referral agencies, we're talking about um, uh, from the fire department. It's important that we get approval from the fire department as it relates to um, uh, in case of any emergency. Um, you know, as we know, this based on history from the St. Jude Hospital, this is very important to, to, to mitigate or to prevent um, any disaster that would have happened before. So we need to get approval from the fire department. Uh, we also need to get approval from the health department as it relates to the, the, the treatment of um, sewer, et cetera, waste. Uh, sewer waste, and et cetera. Um, also, from the um, signature solid waste management, we also need approval for that so that they are aware of um, the proposal for waste treatment, um, garbage collection, uh, et cetera. And, um, and there's also uh, the need for approval from the Ministry of Infrastructure as it relates to traffic management um, during construction and, um, and post-construction as well. Um, currently, we have received approval from infrastructure, Ministry of Infrastructure, and the solid waste. We are awaiting um, um, feedback from, from the fire department and, for the ministry, and also from the Ministry of, of, of Health, um, which we are expected to get at the end of this week into next week. Um, with these um, approvals from the for agencies, uh, in addition to uh, full application uh, for DCA, all joints, architectural, structural, whatever joints required, will be submitted to DCA for their approvals, um, for their review and subsequent approval. Uh, and once that is done, then we have um, the project will be um, given full okay to, to proceed or to continue um, on site for completion. That's very good news. But I just want to ask you very quickly before we um, leave the issue of the Development Control Authority. During your design review, were there significant um, changes which had to be effected to the original designs um, for the hospital? What, did you find that there were uh, significant variations that had to be accommodated? Uh, there, we had to 
make some changes, uh, minor changes, that is, due to the change of uh, the scope, the general scope of the, of the project, as in um, um, direction from the, from the government as to uh, the direction which the project, uh, the buildings, certain buildings which are going to be used you know, within the project. Um, we had to make a few minor modifications to specific, especially the, the east wing, the east wing um, and, and the west wing to accommodate um, you know, the use of uh, some of the buildings that um, previously had um, sort of been pushed aside. Uh, but then the, the, but these changes are minor, um, which would not uh, uh, cause any, any major delay you know, in, in proceeding with completing the, uh, the hospital. So, so I, I just wanted to add to what um, Simaki has said. Um, I don't want to leave the impression that work is going on without DCA approval. Um, mm -hmm. Work has, there are buildings, four buildings with DCA approval. And we've been working on these buildings while we are with the final approval on the other buildings. Okay, so the work has been ongoing in terms of how we progress on, on the West Wing. Um, and how we progress on the physiotherapy and dialysis building, as well as the, the laundry and maintenance building. Full DC approval were granted for these four buildings, and that is where we have been. So the work that has been progressing so far has been on, on, on those buildings. So what Mr. McKee is talking about is, is the balance of the project, which is the West Wing. Okay. The West Wing um, and, um, and the, the surgical wing also? Yes, and yes. the West mm -hmm. Wing and the mm -hmm. surgical wing. Mm -hmm. And this is what he's talking about, where slight modifications had to be made. Um, DC, new submissions had to be made to DC, uh, and this is what we, we wait in. So when he's speaking about final approval, he's talking about that aspect of the work, but the work that has been going on, I don't want. I want to make it absolutely clear that those buildings we have had full DC approval on them. Yes. So, but, that, but, that, but that affords us the perfect opportunity to segue into another part of the discussion. Mm -hmm. um, depending on who you listen to, one would get the impression that the new building, which had started in 2019, would have formed the entire hospital complex, which is. Right. Uh, very incorrect. Um, there are a number of other buildings that would have also formed part of the hospital complex, irrespective of whether that new building was what was going to form the main hospital complex. So tell us about what would the entire complex, Mr. Williams, look like uh, when St. Jude's is completed. Okay. So, so if, if you look at the layout of the entire hospital. We are talking about, I mean, initially we were talking about 14 buildings, and we are back to the same 14 buildings. Mm -hmm. um, what the new, so the impression is being given that phase one, you had a lot of buildings scattered all over the place, and by going into phase two, which is one huge building, you would have eliminated the need for all these other buildings. That is not the, tr that is not the, the facts. The facts are completely different to that. The, 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 the new building, which was being pursued by the last administration, for it to function as a hospital, would need 12 other buildings the services of 12 other buildings. All it would have done was you would have bought into one structure the facilities on the West Wing and the surgical wing. So basically, it just would take, absolve what was being done in two other buildings. And they are, they are continuous buildings. They are linked to each other. And it would have bought it into that. But all the rest of the, all the other 12 buildings which form part of the compound would have been part of the new facility. 
In fact, so much so that the West Wing, the West Wing, which is part of the old structure, you would have had to use the administrative building upstairs and the kitchen downstairs, mm -hmm. which would have created a, a challenge because there's a road passing between it. So when you prepare food in the kitchen, you have to cross a road to take it across into that new structure if that was being used as the hospital. So in fact, the layout of the hospital remains the same. Two buildings were destroyed, the physiotherapy and the dialysis building. They were destroyed and they were replaced by two other buildings for the same purpose. They're just bigger buildings. So those two buildings will be part of phase one, which is the structures that were there before. But on the compound, you have a number of other buildings which has nothing to do with providing services to patients. You have the ambulance units and the monitoring units that would still be in operation. You have the volunteers' quarters. You have the maintenance building, maintenance and laundry. You have the MOG. You have, a, you have the gift shop, the chapel, the, chapel, the, the, the warehouse building. Mm -hmm. All these buildings, which are not part of the, the huge structure. Mm -hmm. And there but, are some other buildings which provide other they are, services. They are, auxiliary auxiliary like, services yeah, yes. but they are part of the facility. Like the oxygen <coughs> rooms and the pump rooms, etc. They, 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 they are back in use as part of the original phase one, but they would have been part of. Anyway any new structure that was that was done. The, 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 the structure on its own, I, I don't want to use the derogatory term of the box, but that huge, humongous structure is not a standalone hospital. It just brings in the services on the, the, the beds component of the hospital, the surgical, um, medical, and the uh, pediatric section of the hospital where you have beds. This is all that would have been in that building, but all the other supporting services, the same existing buildings would have had to provide the same thing. So essentially what you're saying is that the, the south wing, the new building, yes. would have only eliminated the use for the east wing and, and the, the surgical wing. wing. That's all. And all of the other buildings mm -hmm. that are currently on site would have still formed yes. the complex would have still would formed it. It cannot exist hospital. without it. It would still yes. be required. All, of, all the other buildings that have been required. So the impression being given that there are a number of buildings and you build that one and, and then you don't need them, that is not the case. And I think it is also important to state that here, if I'm, if I'm not mistaken, that the, the East Wing and the Central Surgical Wing would be the buildings where all patient services are going to be delivered from. Absolutely. So the notion that if one comes to the hospital, they have to move from between anywhere one and 28 buildings to get services is also incorrect. No, no, it's incorrect because these are not services that patients have to access in those buildings. You know, you have, you have a warehouse that's for storing stuff. You have a maintenance and laundry building. You have um, um, volunteer quarters. Okay. You you have a morgue. All right. You know. It's, so it's take us back to November 2022, first yeah. of November, when the prime minister intimated that work would have begun on the site. Tell us what has happened between November uh, and and today, where we are now. Okay. The work started on the site in November. Um, cleaning up of the facility, because if you recall, that phase one had been left untouched for over five years, from 2016. Um, it was never, no work was done on it during the last administration for five years. Mm -hmm. and, and remember, the, the new administration came in, and until November last year, no work had been done on it. So you, you're talking for six years. So the building was, it looked really bad when you went inside of it, you know. 
rats, bats had taken over. Um, but the structure, there is nothing wrong with the structure. It looked totally unclean. So we had to clean it and sanitize it. So a contract was given, a, a basic contract under the supervision of the Ministry of Infrastructure to clean the facility, clean the compound, clean inside the building, sanitize it, and to fence the compound. Because there's a hospital, there's a hospital facility. You need to fence it, you Security need to protect it for security reasons. <coughs> so that initial contract included cleaning, sanitizing um, inside the buildings and the compound, cleaning up the compound, and fencing and closing the, the compound. That was completed within two months. So that was started in November. By mid-January, it was completed. Okay, so that was that. Okay, so that was the initial contract. And as I said, um, there were four buildings with approval from DCA. So we started some work in doing some inside work in these four buildings um, at the moment. So that's, that's what has been done. Um, Maki, I just want to go to one thing quickly before we go for a commercial break. Mm -hmm. um, tell us what um, MEPs would entail, because from what we know now at this stage of the project, the buildings that um, we are talking about, the East Wing and the Central Surgical Wing, what is mainly required is the installation of MEPs into those buildings. Um, what does that really mean to, 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 to the labor on the streets? Okay, um, MEP really stands for Mechanical, Electrical, and, and Plumbing. That's basically what MEP stands for. Um, uh, and these are very important uh, aspects for, for any, any project, any construction project, and especially for some a project the magnitude of uh, uh, hospital, St. Jude Hospital, is very important. Um, from the previous um, well, construction, that have been going on. There have been some MEP works um, going on. But um, with this current phase, uh, these mechanical, electrical, and plumbing works um, had to be reviewed, um, both design and um, the actual physical infrastructure work on the, on the site. Because of, because of the time period that these um, um, these items have been there, not being used as they should have. Um, you know, water or anything would have gotten into these conduits and, 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 and pipes, etc. So all these need to be reviewed and, and maybe some had to be replaced. So it's very important that these things done, especially really when, when it comes to the surgical um, wards. Um, we need to make sure all our plumbing, electrical, and, um, and mechanical pipes and everything works as it should for, for, for the hospital. So that has been, so as well as we may not have much of a design work architecturally to, to do, we had to um, make, ensure that all these other, um, um, this other aspect of the, uh, the project is um, um, up to function as, as it should for us. Thank you very much for that. We are now due for a break, but when we come back, um, we shall explore the, the issue of, of, of financing for this St. Jude's Hospital project. There has been some very uh, interesting and important developments where financing is concerned. So when we get back after the break, we shall deal with the, the issue of financing to complete the project. The panel, the discussion, an objective and impartial view of the issues of interest to you. Nation Beat is on now. What's in the food you're eating? Do you really even know? All the chemicals and hormones used to accelerate their growth. All the artificial flavoring, sweeteners and colors too. We consume and we don't spare a thought for the damage that they'll do. No, think about the children. Think about the children. How will we save them? 
Chemicals and GMOs are not the solution. Use organic and join. Excessive agrochemical use, additives, and genetically modified foods are harmful to health and the environment. Join the good food revolution. Grow, buy, and consume organic. A message from Rice St. Lucia and the Ministry of Sustainable Development with funding from the GEF Small Grants Program, UNDP. The good food revolution. Welcome back to Nation Beat. My guests today are Mr. Michael Williams, the chairperson for the St. Jude's Hospital Reconstruction Project Steering Committee, and Mr. Jeffrey McKee, an uh, architect employed of Caribbean Consulting Engineers, the ones providing the supervision oversight for the St. Jude's Reconstruction Project. The funding required for the completion of St. Jude's has been a very difficult issue. Previous governments have made somewhat piecemeal attempts at raising the resources required for the completion of the project. Um, we have had some loans in the past, but never been sufficient to complete the project. Um, in August of this year, however, the government signed a funding agreement with the Saudi Fund for Economic Development, um, which would see us complete the hospital project. Mr. Williams, take us through how we were able to um, get the funding that we now have available to us um, and tell us what the conditions, what the stipulations are of that, of that, of that, of that money. Okay, so b before I even get to that, I just want to elaborate a little on my initial point about one of the reasons why phase one, the continuation of phase one was important was because of the cost involved Mm -hmm. in, in, in making a choice between which one to, to pursue. That was one of the reasons. Um, it would have cost, so on phase two, um, $118 million was already spent on the bottom, on the, on the building. That's, mm -hmm. that's, that's what we call the box. But just to complete um, the bottom, to bring people into the bottom, you would have had to spend another 70, 70 million dollars just on the bottom. In fact, a contract was given 11 days before general elections for 70, 72 million, 74, they're about 66 and 6, 72 million dollars to complete the bottom floor and to bring in, so that it will be in a, in a state of readiness. That doesn't include equipment, doesn't include fix, fixtures, it doesn't include um, furniture. That's just to bring it into a state of readiness, just the bottom, so we're talking $72 million. And a, a contract was actually prepared um, for that, for a particular company. We realize that you have not, you're not talking about completing the balance, phase one of the, of, 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 of the box. So you just deal with phase two. So if you bring people into phase one and you have people in phase one, you have a pop in, into, into the bottom floor, you have a problem with dealing with people, work's going on at the top while you have people at the bottom. Sit people at the bottom. Okay. We had a rough estimate just to seal the top because there is no proper roofing, just to seal the top and the cladding around it. In fact, not the cladding, just to seal the top to ensure that you protect it from rain is another 16 million. So I'm talking about 72 million to bring the bottom. Plus 16. And 16 just to seal the top. And I'm not talking about work inside the second floor. That's 88 million. So, so when we look at what it would cost to commission or to bring the phase one into completion, we, we did not have an actual estimate on it, but clearly it would cost a lot less. Okay, so that was one of the reasons. Going back to, to where we are today, as you rightly said, never before has 
total financing to complete any one phase of the hospital has been secured. The hospital has been built. As you get funding, you, 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 you move along. Um, we know how we started. It was an accident. We had a destruction, and therefore there was no dedicated funding. Dr. Anthony did his best to secure 20 million from the Taiwanese. Um, 10 million had been drawn on. Another 10 million US was outstanding, which was available. And probably with that 10 million and another 10 million US, we could have completed phase one. But it was not done. The 10 million plus another 20 million US, 30 million, was spent on the new structure along with other monies because the 30 million US is about 81 million. But yet 118 was spent, so therefore the difference was spent from local budgeting. But the point is, just to do the bottom floor, you needed another 70 million. So this, so the loan now for the 200 and 1 million EC, 75 million US secured from the Saudis, is for 20 years, five year. Um, period before you start to pay, and then you have 20 years to pay. So in essence, you have a 25-year loan. You have five years before you start to pay, 20 years to pay, 2% interest rate with a, a significant provision that if you were to have some disaster happen in the country, there is a clause in the in the law in in the, in the agreement that make provision for for delaying payments or putting payments on pause, but you are not under pressure to continue the payment. That money will complete phase two. It will equip it the, the hospital, furniture, fixtures, equipment. Train people to 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 operate the equipment, and also it will rehabilitate the stadium for the government or the, the Ministry of Economic Development to hand it over back to the Ministry of Sports or the sports people of Saint Lucia. So that money makes provision for everything that is needed, and it is the first time that money has been secured to ensure that the project is brought to finality. You know, you bring it to total completion. You equip it, and you also put the stadium back in a condition that it can be handed over to the sports um, fraternity in St. Lucia. Before I ask you that very important question about reassuring St. Lucians that the hospital will be completed, there is also one important component that has come with the Saudi funding, and that is climate proofing the entire facility. Tell us what briefly that would entail, given that climate change is, 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 is a real issue that we can see right here every day now. Okay, you, you want to do that? Yeah, well, <coughs> okay, when, when we refer to um, uh, elements that we assist in the, the climate change, we're talking about um, the use of solar energy, mm -hmm. you know, join, um, you know, energy source of power using the area of the sun. So part of um, this project includes the use of solar panels um, as an alternative means of um, energy source for the facility, um, not only to assist in the, um, uh, the electrical power, but also in heating in water, um, which is a very, um, uh, which is a must in for the in, in hospital. For, for hospital. Um, we're also looking at um, um, ways in which we could um, harvest you know, water harvesting uh, uh, um, techniques. 
So part of what we're doing now on, on, the, on the currency in Judas Hospital includes um, provision for uh, water harvesting and um, join, join energy from, um, um, you know, from the sun, or alternative means of energy, which will benefit the, the facility in the long run in terms of, um, um, you know, cost or electrical power, etc. Okay, thank you very much for that. Mr. Williams, I think it would be remiss of us not to leave here this afternoon, uh, today, sorry, and not telling the people of the, the South, more particularly, but the country as a whole, because the St. Jude's Hospital Reconstruction Project has been a very painful subject over almost a decade and a half now. Um, a number of administrations have come and gone, and the hospital still remains incomplete. The nurses and doctors who offer the services from the stadium have worked under very trying circumstances. Um, tell us, the people of this country, um, in, in very clear language, um, what the government's objective is in terms of completing the hospital. Not sure that you can give us a time frame today, but reassure the people of the country that the hospital is number one, number two, and number three priority for the government of St. Lucia. Okay, uh, Mr. Wilson, um, the Prime Minister has on many occasions um, extended um, his heartfelt apology to the nurses, the doctors, the workers at the hospital for being placed on the, for working for so long under these difficult conditions and his appreciation for, for the work that they have done to keep the services, the health services available to the public in the South. And I want to use this opportunity to place and record the appreciation of the government for um, the staff of St. Jude's, everybody who have been involved in, in, in working under these conditions. I want to assure you that for the first time, the funding is available, the structures are in place, the plans are in place to ensure that we complete St. Jude Hospital once and for all. So while I will not be able to give you an exact time frame, I want to assure you that it will not be long from now, that within months, not years, maybe a little over a year, but certainly not years. And I'm saying so confident that it will not take us two years. It might take a year, a little over a year, for us to move into a completed central hospital from St. from the stadium, and we will have a properly functioning hospital, and that day we will come when we will open that facility for um, the people of the South and St. Lucia in general. But the time is near, because all the different elements that are needed to make it work are in place, and we are moving um, very fast to get it done. Are you also assuring the public that the quality of service that will be offered from the St. Jude's Hospital on the OJ side would be um, as best as you can find anywhere else in the world? Absolutely. You see, St. Jude has had uh, a track record for excellent service. Um, it has been affected by operating out of a stadium. They've done their best. We are providing a top of the line facility to go back into. And a hospital is as good as its, its medical professionals in as much as you need um, certain pieces of equipment to get the work done. The excellent service that has been provided by the professionals at St. Jude's will continue, but it will be 
done in an environment if it's more conducive to providing that service. So I want to assure you that when the new facility is open, we will get top-class medical services from that hospital. Final thoughts from you, Mr. Murky? Um No, um, well, I'd just like to um, <coughs> which really the fact that, um, that uh, soon um, the new hospital, or the St. Jude Hospital, will be um, completed, um, fully functional, um, with all the um, requirements needed um, to have everything um, in place, to have everything working. Okay. Final thoughts from you, Mr. Williams? Well, I just, again, I just want to, to assure the public that the long-awaited D will soon be with us and that um, we should all be confident that the government will deliver on its promise to um, open the new facility during this term of office, but it will be not towards the end of the term. It will be somewhere not too long from now. Yes. And I am very sure all St. Lucians would yeah. welcome the news that the hospital is 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 is, 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 is the opening of the hospital is, is is imminent a lot sooner than a lot of people yes. believe that it is. Yes, it is. Um, it has been my pleasure having the two of you here today on Nation Beat. Um, it has been a pleasure bringing to the country, the nation, um, a, a very important update on the status of the St. Jude's Hospital Reconstruction Project. As I said earlier, this project has been around for a decade and a half almost. Um, and that's a long time by any stretch of, 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 of measure. Um, we are very happy that um, the government has made significant progress in completing the hospital. And as my guests have said to you today, that the government is sparing no effort in ensuring that it returns um, complete medical services to the people of the South through uh, the completion of the St. Jude's Hospital at the original site in Oje. Thank you very much, gentlemen, for having um, agreed to be my panelists here today. Thank you very much, St. Lucia. The panel, the discussion, an objective and impartial view of the issues of interest to you. Nation Beat is on now.